Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to initialize a molecule object or a molecular system using PySTF. So in PySTF, basically, the all the um, properties or uh, you know the code related to initializing or defining a molecular object is within the module called GDO. So this is the module GDO within PySTF, which is essential to create a molecular object, and then this molecular object can be used by other modules such as let's say the hardware fog module or the dft module or the couple cluster module and so on to perform a, a respective calculation on that particular molecular system now there are um, quite a lot of useful tutorials um, from biosf developers on how to initialize a molecular object so i have i have three uh, links that i found very useful so the first link is from the github um, page um, where they have a very nice example within the examples directory and then in the GDO directory and then by the name of input mold.py so this is the example and however the same contents or the essence can also be found in their uh, tutorial on the website sunqm.github.io and again um, they give all the necessary details to initialize a molecular object and then finally um, I also found this uh, page very useful which basically lists out all the functions that the GTO module provides and uh, all the properties that it has so basically it's kind of an API documentation so um, this is also very useful for advanced developers so coming back to um, the aim of this tutorial that is to initialize a molecular object so let's go ahead and open this particular tutorial and here they say that actually there are three main ways um, by which you can uh, initialize or define a molecular system. So the first way is to assign the geometry, basis, etc. explicitly and then build the molecular object. So basically what they do is they first, um, okay, they create a, an em a kind of an empty mol mole object by giving this command. So they uh, call this uh, object MOL, small and then they say uh, you, they import GDO from PySF. So that is the most important from PySF import GDO, and then they give GDO dot mole, and this essentially creates an empty mole object. So what we are going to do is we are going to open our terminal as well and try to give these commands um, simultaneously. So we do something like from PySF import GDO to import the GDO. Uh, module uh, which is responsible for initializing a mole and then we give the command mole equals gto dot mole parentheses and that will basically uh, create an empty mole object and you can verify this by checking its pro some of its properties for example if you try to check the number of atoms then we can do so by giving the command mole dot and atoms and you will say that it raises uh, i'm sorry okay it has no attribute in atoms so let me just confirm what is the correct uh, so as i said i will refer to the api documentation maybe i give the wrong uh, attribute or property um, so the number of atoms is accessed by giving the command um, let me try to find it as soon as possible okay so we skip the o as well as the s i think so um, we just give the command natm mol dot natm and then we hit enter and as you can see we get zero because uh, currently this is an empty mol object so coming back to the tutorial i'm uh, sorry coming back to the tutorial and okay so the next thing is um, now we try to build our molecule so the first and most important thing is to specify the name of the atoms as well as the positions so what we can do is we can give the command mol dot atom equals and then with the uh, triple quotes we enter um, what do we enter we enter o for oxygen and then the coordinates are just zero zero and zero and then we give a semicolon to enter the next atom that is h for hydrogen and then we give the coordinates zero one zero and then we enter the semicolon once again and give the coordinates of the another h atom um, zero zero one and then we hit enter so now if i again try to give the command mol dot natum 
then you will see again it says that the number of atoms is zero that is because right now what we are doing is we are just uh, initializing some of the attributes that are needed for the mol object but we haven't given the command mol.build yet so this is the most explicit way of uh, defining or initializing a mol object and now what we can do is we can either go ahead and give the mol.build command or we can also specify one more attribute that is the basis as shown in this tutorial so um, if we don't specify the basis and let's say we just give the command mol.build and hit enter then you will see that it worked and now if you try to access the number of atoms for, by giving the command mol.atom then you will get three atoms because we just uh, gave the command mol.build which let it initialize the uh, molecular system completely however if you try to access the basis object that is mol.basis now as you might remember that we haven't specified any basis in our terminal unlike the tutorial over here but still you will notice that it will um, assign some basis by default and that is exactly sto3g so by default PySIF just assigns some um, values to the attributes when, when you give them all the build command but uh, for your custom calculations you might want to change that so again you will probably do something like model basis and you might want to do some other basis set let's say def to svp and then hit enter but now again if you try to access this um, attribute it will say def to svp but um, maybe some other attributes may not correspond to svp so a good idea would be to just go ahead and give the model build command so that um, it initializes everything according to this so that is it that is the first way of building the or initializing the molecular object the next way um, would be to over here so the next way is we create an empty mol object like, just like before so we do mol equals cto.mol and then we specify the atom basis and all the other properties that we might want within the build command um, by in term by giving them as arguments to the build function so what we do is we create an empty mol object cto.mol hit enter and then we do mol.build and then we pass the attributes as arguments so we do atom equals and let me just go ahead and copy this uh, to save time and paste it over here and okay so i have pasted that and then we specify the basis that is essentially sto 3g and you may also want to specify some other attributes for example let's say you want to perform a calculation on charge molecules so you can do something like charge equals zero or one whatever you want and then finally you can hit enter um, okay so we have ran into a syntax error and that is actually because instead of having triple quotes like this over here we had only two quotes so i'll just go ahead and add one an, another inverted comma over here and everything should work so this basically means that uh, it's returning the address of our molecular object so now if we try to access some properties like mol.natom then it will say okay it is three mol.basis would be what we specified mol.charge would be exactly what we specified and also what other properties you can access uh, from the molecular object are listed over here as i mentioned so for example you might want to know what is what is the total number of electrons for that you have the command over here i i think it is n electron or something like that um it's uh, somewhere yeah okay an electron as you can see over here so we just go ahead and do mol dot an electron and we get okay so we have oxygen with eight electrons and then um two hydrogen with two more electron electrons so that it means 10 electrons and also you might um, notice here that this not essentially the number of electrons in a system but rather the sum of nuclear charges that we have here and um also what you can do is that might be useful is you can do something like mol.nbas so what this does is it returns 5 and that is because it is the number of shells in our molecular system so we have the sto3g basis set and accordingly we have the number of shells as well as the number of basis functions so mol.nbas basically um, as you can see over somewhere over here um, i believe yeah over here so nbas returns the number of shells 
in Adam returns the number of atoms and so on. And maybe you can also get the number, I mean, not maybe, but you definitely you can get the number of basis functions. Um, so I think the command for that was, um, let me see if I remember that correctly, mol dot um, na or something, I don't remember. Oh, let me confirm over here. It was something along the lines of NaO. Okay, so the command is actually this one, yeah? So the command is mol dot NaO underscore AR parenthesis. Um, sorry. Ah, NR actually, yeah, not AR. So NR, and that means the number of basis functions around molecules is seven. However, you might remember from your maybe some quantum chemistry course that the number of basis functions still depends if you're using whether you are using Cartesian Gaussian basis functions or spherical Gaussian. So um, you might want to confirm which Gaussians you are using. So one way to confirm that would be to give the command mol dot um, let me remember cart I think. And if it returns false, that means you are using spherical Gaussian basis functions. If it returns true, that means you are using um, Cartesian basis functions, obviously. However, um, since right now we are using just the sgo 3 g basis functions with oxygen and hydrogen atoms, essentially the number of the spherical basis functions is equal to the Cartesian basis functions. So if we do something like mol.cart equals true, and then we do mol.build once again, and then if we try to access mol.cart, then it will say, okay, now we're using Cartesian basis functions. However, the number of uh, basis functions will still rem remain the same as you can see from this command mol.naonr. It will still re return seven. So number of basis functions remains the same. However, um, you can, uh, not however, but yeah, you can also, um, one very useful thing is to get the labels or the ordering of the basis functions. For example, if you want to compare your results with some other software, then it might be very useful to know if the ordering of the basis functions is the same, what basis function uh, index uh, corresponds to which basis function. So the command to get that is mol.ao underscore labels and then parentheses, I guess. Yeah. So this command is very useful to get the ordering as well as the labels of the basis functions. So we have, since we defined oxygen as the first atom, so we have first of all the oxygen basis function. So we have the 1s basis function on the oxygen, then the 2s basis function on the oxygen atom. And then finally we have the 2px, 2py, 2pz basis functions for the oxygen atoms. And then we have the 1s basis function for the H atom and then another 1s basis function for the another H atom. And remember since we are using STO 3G basis functions, we only have the like the minimal um, basis functions required for these calculations over here. So that is why, as you can see, these correspond to seven basis functions. That is why mol.naonr returns seven. So that is, those were just some of the properties or attributes you um, might find useful when working with pi cf 2 axis and whatnot. So coming back, all the way back to um, defining or initializing a molecular system. So we have covered two ways. The first one was the most explicit way where we define atoms separately, bases separately, everything separately. And then the other way was slightly smaller where we supplied everything as the arguments to the build function. However, there is another shortcut method which is very short and quick where you can either use the gdo.m or by cf.m function and then supply everything similar to the build function before just as the argument. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate that as well. So we do something like mol2 equals, then we do gdo.m and then within the um, arguments we supply everything. So let me just go ahead and copy everything from here to control C and then go ahead and paste everything. So we, first of all, we have the atoms being defined over here and then the bases and you might also uh, one minute, um, there has been slight mistake over here. So let me just go ahead and amend that. So we want the basis here and then do STO3G. Okay, and then you might also even make it a charge molecule or something like that. So I can do charge equals one as well over here and then hit enter. But I ran into some error because um, the spin, um, the electron number nine and spin zero were not constant. So when you are 
making the charges different, then maybe your molecule now uh, goes into a spin one state rather than the spin zero state. And in that case, you can use these properties or the attributes as well to change the spin of the system. And then you might have to do um, an un unrestricted uh, concham or how to for calculation. So let me just go ahead and do that as well. So I'll make the spin equal one. And then the um, definition works well. So now I didn't uh, run into any error. So that is the last way. So just to um, recap, so the first way is the most explicit way. Um, I'm sorry, over here. And this might be useful for advanced dev developers when they are um, you know, copying and pasting or maybe like writing code that takes something from uh, some result and then you put those coordinates within this molecule and so that this might be useful for those kind of developers. However, these methods may also be useful for um, those developers, but yeah, so to each zone. So whatever you prefer, you might use. So these were the three main methods to initialize the more object and you might find more details on these links. I'll make sure to attach these links in the description down below. That is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. In case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.